ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಪರಮಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶುಕ್ಲಾಂಬರಧರಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಶಶಿವರ್ಣ ಚತುರ್ಭುಜ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ವದನ ಧ್ಯಾತ್ ಸರ್ವಿಘ್ನೋಪಶಾಂತೆ ಆಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ದ ಟಾಕ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಋಗ್ವೇದ ಸಂಹಿತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಔಟ್ಲೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಟಾಕ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಟಾಕ್ ಎ ಲಿಟ್ಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಋಗ್ವೇದ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ನೋ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಕನೆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಡಯಾಗ್ರಾಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಡಯಾಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಪೇ ಅಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ದಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ರಿಚುಯಲ್ ಯಜ್ಞ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯಜ್ಞ ಸಂ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಸೋಮಯಜ್ಞ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಟಾಕ್ ಎ ಲಿಟ್ಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಸೋಮಯಜ್ಞ ಅಗ್ನಿಷ್ಠೋಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಡೇ ವೇರ್ ದಿ ಸೋಮ ಕ್ರೀಪರ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ರಶ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಸೋಮ ಜ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಫರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಲೈಬೇಷನ್ಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸವನಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಾತಃ ಸವನ ಮಧ್ಯಂದಿನ ಸವನ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ತೃತೀಯ ಸವನ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರಾತರನುವಾಕ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ರೆಸಿಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ of ricks large number of them and i'm going to show you how those ricks are if i are uh, arranged in the rigveda so in fact the soma yagna actually forms the basis of the structure of rigveda and there is a lot of this i may skip some of this uh, all agnas are contained in agnishtoma and this is an important concept agnishtoma has no beginning and no end and it is endless and it is demonstrated and then i'm going to talk about why there are 191 suktas in the first mandala and exactly the same number in the 10th mandala and what is the significance of that and uh, rigveda is the most uh, uh, ancient religious text i don't really want to use the word religious or text in that but this is a common usage so i'm using it uh, it's not the work of a single author it's all known to everybody rik is the basic unit rik is a mantra and it has a rishi the person who visualized it a chandas it is composed in a particular meter and it is addressed to a devata and it has a particular vinyoga a usage and these rigs are organized into suktas and suktas into mandalas all the rigs in a given sukta may have the same rishi chandas devata and vinyoga but the rigs may have more than one rishi more than one chandas uh, the suktas not the rig uh, more than one devata and more than one vinyoga the length of a sukta may be one rik to more than 50 the text that's available to us is known as a shakala samhita and it consists of 10552 rik mantras organized into 1028 suktas and arranged into 10 mandalas this is all well known there are 400 rishis associated with these mantras and about 30 of them or women the total of number of devatas is nominally 33 but uh, let's not worry about that number uh, question is these do not belong to one particular time the rishis lived for for thousands of years and they are not are just one devata or one they are not in one chandas so the question is what is it that holds the rigveda together what caused it to be preserved for such a long period with such great fidelity and that's simply a uh, representation of all the uh, mandalas and number of suktas and the number of rigs in each mandala uh, pay attention to that there is 191 there and 191 here first mandala and 10th mandala the rigveda is also classified into ashtakas and adhyayas but it is the same suktas in the same order but simply classified differently so there is no difference between the suktas in this grouping or the other grouping except the naming 
but this is meant for studying purposes and it is for making it contest up. A deep study of the Vedic sacrifices is essential for a proper understanding of the Vedic literature for arriving at approximately correct statements about the chronology, the development, and stratification of different portions of literature. Uh, that is, uh, uh, this is a diagram in which each mandala is represented by a small circle with a number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then there are, you see, connecting lines. These lines are drawn by following an anukramanika, that is the ones that list all the rishis and the chandas and the riks, they are available. So you take, say, for example, uh, mandala four. There's one rishi in mandala four, also contributes a sukta or a rik to mandala nine, you make a connecting line. And if there is one rishi which connects to five, the same rishi has contributed, or another rishi has contributed to mandala five and in mandala four. So you see that if you look at all the mandalas, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they all have fewer connections, sparse connections. But nine, 10, eight, and one, they are densely connected. If you look at number nine, it is connected to all the mandalas. Whereas these are, for example, mandala two, there's no other connection except mandala nine. In fact, it is this type of arrangement that might have contributed to the fact that these mandalas 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which are called Vamshiya mandalas, because this is uh, Gritsamada, Vishwamitra, Vamadeva, and so on. And these are, uh, they are contributed by rishis belonging to a particular Vamsha. Since the important structure is this, Ninth mandala is the connection. What is the, so it, it, there must be some significance. So maybe the ninth mandala forms the basis for the connection. So it can be, one can say, it is the nabhi for the entire Rigveda. But Soma mandala deals with one particular devata only, that is Soma Paumana, and it is, deals with the Soma Yajna. So we'll look at a little bit uh, of uh, Yajna. Yajna is a very ancient institution and it's Prajapati Puro Sushtva, that's it, in Bhagavad Gita it says, that's the, it was done by Prajapati. Devan Bhaveta Nena, Te Deva Bhaventuvaha. This yajna is a collaborative activity between humans and the devatas. And uh, uh, in simple terms, yajna involves yaga, giving up of some dravya, material position belonging to the yajamana, who performs it, to a devata, through the medium of Agni. And it is done to the accompaniment of recitation of mantras. But this is the outer ritual. But there is a deep inner significance to Yajna. And uh, uh, it's a, Yajna is a journey, it's an Advaram. Creation itself is an Yajna. Purushukta is a Yajna. Yajna, Yajna, Vajanta, Devaha, Tani, Dharmani, Prathamanyasana. Everything came from that yajna. So the yajna is the fundamental uh, ritual. There are a number of essential uh, identities. Yajna vai Vishnu, Yajna vai Prajapati, Yajna Yajamanaha identifies yajna with Vishnu, yajna with Prajapati, yajna with Yajamana. And there are many of such simil uh, similarities. These are established by certain numbers, and we are going to be dealing with some of those. Somebody said this is not a mathematics class. You will follow mathematics here. Uh, there are three groups of yajnas, Havir yajna, Paka yajna, and Soma yajna, depending upon the Havis, the offering that is done. And each of these is divided into seven groups. So there are 30, uh, 21 groups of samsthas, they are called yajna samsthas, and these are all known in Rigveda itself. So some people say the yajnas developed later. That's not true. Even in Rigveda itself, they know all these 21 samsthas. Teno ratna nidhattana, trira saptani sunvate. So it refers to the 27, trira saptani, three times seven. Uh, 
uh, details of the performance of this are not given in Rig Veda, but they are found in Brahmana texts. So this is the Haviragna, Pakagna, Somagna. Uh, this is milk and ghee is the primary thing. It is the cooked grains, and soma juice is the soma agnya. And there are these seven groups, Agnyadhana, Agnihotra, etc., Aupasana, Vaishwadeva, etc., on this. And in the soma agnya, we have Agnishtoma, Patyagnishtoma, etc., Vajapeya, Aptoryama, and so on. I'm going to talk about mainly this Agnishtoma. Soma is a generally thought to be a creeper, but it is much more than that. Uh, there's a very special uh, spiritual significance to that. Soma was not initially, uh, it was initially in heaven, and it was brought to the earth by the Gayatri Chandas, which took the form of an eagle, Shena. And this legend is given in Rig Veda itself. Riji, Pishyeno, Dadamano, etc. Somum, Abharada. So it says the Shena brought it. Ada Yasheno, Abharat Somam, so it brought Soma to earth. Soma was brought to earth so that humans can ascend to heaven. That's the principle. Soma makes you, elevates you. Yajno Vai Sutarmanahu. It is the best ship to take you to heaven. Agnishtoma is the Prakriti, and all the others are Vikritis. That is the primary one, and the others are all variations of that. Agnishtoma lasts for five days, and then sometimes it's called Jyotishtoma. Jyotishtoma and Agnishtoma are equivalent. Sometimes they are interchanged the names. Uh, in Agnishtoma, there is one Yajmana and 16 Ritviks, and they belong to four groups. Hotruvarga, they recite Rig Mantras. Adhvaryu Varga, they recite the Yajur Mantras. Udgatru Varga, who sing Sama, right? and Brahma Varga, the one that sort of overall uh, look, looks to make sure that the Ajna is carried out without a hitch. The performance of the Somi Ajna requires people who are all versed in all the Vedas. So Somi Ajna could not have been performed if Rig Veda had only come first and all the others developed later. They had to know all those things. So that uh, evolutionary model of Rigveda structure is uh, not tenable. Uh, Jyotish Toma lasts for five days. The first day is the, the appointment of the Ritvik uh, and then the Madhuparika followed by Dikshayana and so on. Second day, uh, Pravargya. So these are some ceremonies to prepare the Yajmana. And uh, third day, Pravargya and Upasad are repeated again. Fourth day, more. Uh, and that day, on the second day is the first starting ritual. It's called a Prayaniya Ishti. And then the last day, there is called a Udayana Ishti. That's the one that's a completing ceremony. And after that, there is a Avabhrita Snana that completes the Somayaka. The Prayaniya and Udayana are the two beginning and end of the Somayaka. And the fifth day is the most important day. On that day, the creeper is pressed. Soma is pressed. But before that, there has to be recitations, and uh, uh, there are a number of recitations. One is called the Pratranuaka. So the Advaryu says, Pratranuakam Bruhi. So he says, the Hotravarga recite the Pratranuaka, and they, he goes out and recites that. And I'll tell you the details of that. And then there are what are called 12 Stotras and 12 Shastras that have to be recited in Somiyaga. Stotras are the recitations of Sama mantras. Shastras are the recitations of Rig mantras. For every Stotra, there must be identical number of Rigs in this Shastra. So they go together. Pratranuaka. It has three parts. Agnaya Kratu, Ushasya Kratu, and Ashunakrutu. And in each one, a certain number of deities have to be, the mantras have to be addressed this, and they have to be in specific chandas and a specific number. So for example, a total of 1,324 richas, all directed to Agni, are required for the Agneya Kratu. 
320 of them must be in Gayatri and 591 of them in Trishtu. Ushasakrutu is addressed to Ushas and it must have a total of 220 or 250 richas. Ashunakrutu requires 407 richas and on the same 7 meters. So Prataranwaka alone requires a registration of some 2,000 richas. That's about one-fifth of the whole of Rigveda. And this has to be recited from starting after the midnight the previous day before the sun rises. <coughs> now here it gives Rotras and the Shastras that have to be recited in each of the Savanas. Prata Savana, Madhyandina Savana, and Triti Savana. And see there are five Stotras and five Shastras for Prata Savana, five Stotras and five Shastras for Madhyandina Savana, two Stotras and two Shastras for Triti Savana. For Pratasavana, you need four Ajya Shastras and one Pravuga Shastra. These Pravuga Shastras are seven details. I've been giving you all these details just to show that in, if you follow the Suktas in Rig Veda, they have to follow this order and so on. So Agnishtoma, because they so oh, right. Now look at the Suktas of the Mandala, first Mandala. The very first Sukta, of Rig Veda, Agnimi Ile Purohitam, Yajnas Deva, and that is the principal Ajya Shastra for Somyaka. The next, second, and third suktas, they constitute the Pravuga Shastra. They require the seven deities, and the suktas four to nine celebrate Indra and are recited the Prasasavana of Abhiplavasha Shadaha, it's a variant of Somyajna. Suktas 10 and 11 celebrate Indra, and it's called a Naika, a Naishkavalya Shastra. Sutra, Suktas 20, 12 to 23 contain more comprehensive aspects of the registrations as Home Yajna. 13 is in what's called an Apri Sutta. 16 to 19 contain the Richas for Madhyendra Savana. 20 to 22 address the deities for the Tritiya Savana. Suktas 44 to 50 contain all the Richas or Ashwin Sastra, or deities in the order of Agni, Ushas, Ashwini, Surya, and Indra. Morning libations are in Gayatri only. For midday, they are in Trishtupan Jagati. And the rest of the suktas, 51 to 191 of Mandala, do exactly this. They provide the suktas in Trishtupan Jagati. The arrangement of these mandalas, or the open mandalas in suktas 51 to 191, corresponds in all essentials to the arrangement of suktas found in book. So, what is the conclusion? Mandala 1 lays out the plan for recitations at the three savanas. You have seen all the suktas that have to be recited. Mandalas 2 to 8 reflect this because some details have to be omitted there, but they will be supplied here. Mandala 9 is, of course, the som somayana. Mandala 10 also contains some richas for recitation of somayana. Structure and the organization of the Rig Veda mirrors the performance of the Somyajna as far as the recitations of the Richas are concerned. And then they establish uh, identities between Agnishtoma and Gayatri. Gayatri has 24 letters. And then in Agnishtoma, you need 12 Shastras and 12 Stotras. So that makes it 24. So they say they are identical. So this type of Equating the numbers, establishing the identity by numbers goes on. Gayatri brought Soma to earth, but Soma takes humans to heaven. So there. A year has 24 half months. Agnishtoma has 24 Shastras and Stotras. So this way, uh, and it, uh, there's another one. Just as all waters flow into the sea, Performance of all other agnas are included in Agnishtoma, and there is a large discussion of this. I want to skip all that. This is there is one thing I chose that the I said you the Prayani Ashti, Udayani Ashti, and they are said to have identical structures, and then they says the 
a dishtoma is a sacrificial performance which has no beginning and no end because the beginning is the same as the end. This is what we call in quantum mechanics periodic boundary conditions. The beginning is the same as the end, so it forms a ring. And in fact, that says it's endless. There is a Yajnagata about it. What is the beginning of Agnishtoma is its end, and what is its end is the beginning. And just as a Shakala serpent, and so it forms a circle. And it is no, it is Anadi and Ananta. It has no beginning and no end. This is what we mean by Vedas are Anadi and Ananta. Not that it has it, because the beginning is the same as the end. And it is also timeless, because there is no time involved in this. Now this last question, why there are 191 suktas in Mandala 1? See, so far we talked about Pratra Nuaka. These are all simply uh, rituals required for recitations. And then the structure of the Mandala, uh, mandala was, first Mandala was described by looking at the Shastras, that's the Rik Mantras that are required. Now here we are going to look at The, shastra, the stotras, stotras are the Sambhaveda citations. In Pratasavana, Bahishmavana stotra is sung and it consists of a three, it has nine richas. And it is followed by four Ajya stotras, each one of is a Panchadasha stoma, so 15 richas. So the total number of richas for Pratasavana is nine plus four times 15 is 69. In Madhyandina Savana, there are 15 plus 4 times 17, 83. In Tritiya Savana, it is 21 richas, 17 plus 21, 38. So if you add all the number of Sama richas required for Somayajna, it comes to 190. Add the count 1 for Ejamana, it becomes 191. Exactly the same. And this is the same also as the number of richas required for uh, in, in the 10th Mandala. So what's the conclusion? The structure and organization of Rigveda mirrors the performance of Somayajna. Richas for Pratra Nuvarka recitations show that the entire Rigveda Samhita has existed as one unit. Some people say the six mandalas were compiled first and then the others came later. The Shastra recitations show that Mandala 1 lays out the plan, Mandala 2 takes reflect the plan, Mandala 9 dedicated to Soma, and the Stotra recitations show why there are 191 suttas in Mandala 1 and in Mandala 10. Thank you.